stakeholders, brothers, sisters, familia. My name is Anselmo Perez. You may call me Chemo, common man, addressing common concerns. I'm here tonight not to ask for your vote, but to support and making the right decisions for whom will represent the people's voice. My respect goes to all the candidates here. They're involved, so they can lead by example in my vote. I, on the other hand, lead by my heart. True love is what I look for. Principle before personality is my virtue. And that's what I bring to the board. Conscience. Clear conscience. On behalf of Valley 32, neighborhood of council, I apologize for the, your loss of the funding for last uh, year's fiscal year. And uh, we met protocol thinking we were in exhaust exhausted measures, but that did not occur. But um, I will do my part in helping not to allow this happen again, taking accountability and rectifying our mistakes by taking precautionary measures and preventative measures to make sure this we work as one body, bringing back serenity to Sedeno and its neighboring communities. That's what makes up Alley 32. Breaking the chains of silence and addressing urgent issues in our political realm, gangland tactics and body segregation is truly uncalled for. For united we stand and divided we fall. We must reinstill and restore one nation under God, indivisible, and liberty and Thank justice you. for all. Thank you.
I will try to do the best we can in a group to make it our home. My home, your home, our homes. So all I ask is let's get going and get this done, get the election passed, vote for whoever you want. But just remember, this is my home. I'm going to die here. I'm probably the oldest one <laughs> on the board. But 30 years ago, I decided this was where I was going to be. Thank you. You meant season, not old. Yes. Season. Yeah. Thank you, Eddie. And thank you, Eddie, and our timekeeper, whose name I don't know. Marty. Marty. Thank you, Marty. Okay. Um, we are for the newcomers. If you have a question for all the board members, please fill out a card and bring it up here, and hopefully I will get to it. Um, some of the questions are very pointed. Some of them are kind of negative, so I'm going to try and re-answer them. So if you're mad at me for not reading them verbatim, go ahead and be mad at me. Um, so the first question, oh, we're going to do 30 seconds. And actually, one of the negative questions, actually, I, I've transferred into a positive question and can be done quickly with a raise of hands. So how many of the seated people, of the candidates seated here today know about Robert's Rules of Order? Okay, so the majority. That's great. So the rest of you who don't know, I suggest you look it up online on Wikipedia and just read the first three chapters. It's about how to run a meeting smoothly and how to make sure that everyone has a voice and also um, gives you tricks so that a minority cannot control the majority of the board. Very important to know how to do. Um, the second quickie question is, how many of you know about the Brown Act? Almost everybody. Okay, so once again, it's something you can find online. It's actually a California state law. The neighborhood councils, the city council, everyone who operates as a public entity within the state of California abides by the Brown Act. And it's an act that was authored, I think, back in the 80s, and it's about transparency. So it involves serial meetings, it involves um, posting the notices of your meetings, and it's really about making sure that the community is informed when the board is getting together to make decisions. So once again, you can go to Wikipedia, look up the Brown Act, a, you know, it's great when everyone knows about the Brown Act, um, and keep yourselves informed. So that took care of one negative question. If you wish to hold a conversation, can we have everybody that's speaking in the little room back there? Oh, so not we can those hear. troublemakers. You three guilty guys there? <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Next. So that was some serious stuff. Also, the department is um, doing training. So when the new board is seated at the first meeting following um, the election, which I guess will be in May for you, um, the department will be sending someone to do new board trainings, and they will go over the ethics training and also the financial trainings, and those are also available online. And we have had candidates go ahead and complete the training even before the election so they can use it as another reason to vote for May. So I encourage you all to go to EmpowerLA.org and look up those trainings so you can get a feel for what those are going to be like. But the department is aware that there will be new board members and every board can use some um, new tips on how to be more effective and efficient. Because we do get things done. I know you do. Okay, so the next question is actually a pretty, it's a nice question. So 30 seconds. I would like for you to respond, and he's got the clock set. I would like to see more community gardens. Do any of you plan to organize any gardens and get kids involved in growing vegetables? And this actually goes, there's another question 
Um, other cities are starting to promote healthier alternatives as well as making it more difficult for junk food to be sold to children. What do you plan to do to help our city keep up? So we'll just, we're going to go down the row. Everybody's going to have a chance. Okay? 30 seconds and the clock. I believe that that is a, a wonderful goal that we should, we should enact. Um, one of my personal goals is to work on the beautification of El Sereno. And that includes we have, we have planters in our community that can have you know, beautiful plants planted in them. We do have a, a garden that is, that is a local garden as well as we can try to implement some programs to get some gardening done in elementary school. Thank you. 30 seconds goes fast, or sometimes it goes slow. Um, well, I also, you know, I think that we should, you know, try to budget to do more gardening, that type of thing, projects, and make the city look more beautiful. In regards to, like, you know, I don't believe that we should not allow people to buy chips and all that. I think that comes more from, like, the family's decision. I think there should be more education about food and about healthy options and things like that. Thank you. Uh, regarding community gardens, uh, that, I believe that's an issue as far as funding, because I know every school starts one, and uh, the thing about gardens is that they need water. So I know uh, Multnomah Elementary had a garden for a while, and that went away. I know there's a community garden here on Huntington um, Drive. It's, when it first started, it was a lot of you know, it's Usually when I pass by, it's always closed. Uh, recently, El Sereno Junior High School started a garden program. So uh, without funds, it's the first priority is to secure funds and be able to sustain them.
um, I think, educating students and providing those um, healthy options to the community would benefit them as well. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Uh, so to reiterate what some of these people already said, uh, we have to reach out to the schools, get students and parents educated, informed, and get them excited about this issue. Get them to realize that it's important to worry about green space in our community and about healthy options in our diets. Um, so with that being said, I feel like it's something very possible for us to reach out to these schools, get uh, students and parents informed, educated, and get them excited so that they're willing to volunteer and you know help out with finding where we can get the funds from. So, thank you. Hi, on the community garden side, I can tell you as we already started uh, the process working with home people who will come out and work with us in the community at our school to make you know get some gardens set up at our school so our children can learn about you know gardening and how to grow their own vegetables. On the aspect of uh, the food and chips and all this stuff, that has to be in the parents uh, part of it. I'm a diabetic. So I keep my kids away from a lot of that stuff so they can be healthier and everything that part of it. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Yep. So uh, as far as funding, there I currently work with a lot of non uh, some nonprofits that are working uh, to build edible gardens, not just at a school, but in the community as well. And we can work uh, to try to find uh, who owns uh, the El Sereno Community Garden and figure out hours to open it up to everybody. Um, as far as the youth and unhealthy eating, we can. Uh, I'm working to create like a wellness council with the current high school that we're working with to see some of those issues to get rid of some of the unhealthy foods that are at the school. Thanks. Thank you. Healthy, healthy eating for students is important, so I would reach out to the principals in the area to put a program together to present to the students not only nutrition workshops, but a kind of like a cardio activity that they have, and include the planting of the gardenings in front of the school, because they need more gardenings in most of these schools. Thank you. You know, I think, I think that's very important. You know, I started my own garden out of a box free mattress in my backyard. And uh, how many of us, you know, do have backyards? Let's utilize that space, you know? So, you know, get back there, you know, with the sweat on your brow, and, uh, you know, you're getting your kids involved, your nieces, nephews, anybody in the community, you know? You have your own backyard, you start one there. You know, the only reason I have to fence my aunt is because I have chickens, so, you know, I have to be careful that I don't eat my vegetables, but you know what? There's enough space and it's in, it's in our backyards. We just need programs to help us. Thank you. Thank you. Just two weeks ago, I was at the El Cerrito Middle School, and they were actually harvesting their own garden. And that garden has turned out to be a very big, spacious, green area for all the children to enjoy. They will be having a uh, wellness fair coming up in the next month. So I advise all of you to come out and get some information as far as healthy eating. I, for one, do not eat junk food. I taught my children not to eat it, and I'm hoping to come out the other uh, board members and, and also pass the same advice to all the other children that are in the school. Thank you. Thank you. I work in uh, Pasadena, so I pass something to drive every day. Uh, I don't know who owns the uh, garden there, but I think it should be owned by the neighbor council or by someone that has, who we actually know and pinpoint in the community that know, know we know that owns the Community garden because it's closed most of the time, so the neighbor council needs to take care of that. Uh, in terms of eating, I, you know, it's it's really access to uh, the church sources because there's a liquor store in every corner, so we need to have Thank healthier you. food. Last year, I got together with my granddaughter and we started an aquaponics pro uh, uh, program in my backyard. I believe in hydroponics, aquaponics because we are in dire need of more water and the use of that water. And so one of the things that we have to make sure is that our city government makes sure that we get our, our, our water and they, they don't overcharge it for it. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, um, this is something that's close to my heart because I love gardening. Um, yes, we do need funding, um, but a lot of times we need to use the natural resources we have at home. Containers, container gardening uh, might be a good asset to help um, the children to get the schools involved and teach them um, how we can use these natural resources to reuse them. 
I was also at the Alcerino um, middle school um, gardening thing, and it was very beautiful to see the children there. And um, we need you. to start this in the rest of the school. Thank you. Um, attending to the land, uh, I worked for the Department of Agriculture for over 10 years, and uh, definitely it's a must for every household. And it's just not about cosmetics, it's really still in the foundation. You know, family, food, and shelter. And if every individual finds that in their own household, instead of looking for help, we need to be waiting. So stop waiting and find your own household and there lies the solution. Thank you. Okay, so I believe that education is an important part of this, um, and I know that a lot of the elementary schools are doing a lot already um, to get the kids, you know, going early. Like we have such high school, they help you guys, 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 walk around early in the morning, doing laps. Um, another school is doing the wellness, one, uh, green wine system. Well, like they're offering, like, big meals and stuff like that. Other treats, if the kids can eat, if they're healthy, um, as an alternative for snacks. So I think if we get all of those information put them together, Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, Stacey, I'm sorry. Um, um, I welcome any positive idea, um, but I believe this is the project. You first have to analyze and secure funding, then design the project depending on the funding, then implement, and then from there we get our hands dirty and start planning. I mean, it, it, it's a project, and I invite like, any stakeholders with any ideas to come up and get involved with the committees. Thank you. So that was a nice. This is Mr. Ruben Travis. Okay. He's also a candidate. Again, my name is Capricia Biasio. I see, um, recently I see as our community's greatest challenge is uh, that there seems to be a, a little bit of a spike in graffiti. And, um, and, and I see a, a lot more children congregating into games, I see. So the biggest community challenge I see right now is that we need to come up with a way to organize um, our community to empower our youth to direct them into other, to other items that they can make positive changes in our community. Thank okay, you. thank you. Um, the greatest challenge I see would probably be indifference, where you know people don't care; they just care about their own space and you know don't think about the community at large and what they can do to make things better. Like, for example, not cleaning up after your dog or some you know things like that. I think those little things add up, and you know if people take care of their surroundings, we can all improve it for everybody. Um, I. I've identified uh, that just people are not involved. And the most simplest way to solve that is to get involved. Um, I appreciate everyone who comes out and volunteers their time at the cleanups, at the Kai festivals, at all these other events. So uh, it's not a difficult problem to solve, but we just need to get involved. Thank you. I think our biggest challenge currently is um, business development because it's a multi-tiered problem. It has to do with the environment, it has to do with community involvement, um, it has to do with uh, location. You know, Huntington Drive is basically a highway. And I think we can start by first addressing the um, environment and also addressing community involvement, uh, getting people aware and uh, connecting with our community members more and seeing how uh, we can improve the local environment to get businesses to come here to get people to want to shop here. There are people in the community that will go out and clean up the graffiti that 
themselves. However, they've got to know where it is. They have to have resources to put it. There's also a matter that there's an Office of Community Beautification in the Department of Public Works. They will help. So there are ways, but at first must be, I know where it is, I know when it is, and we know how to deal with it. Thank you. Yes, I'm also about the um, graffiti. There's a lot of that going on right now, and right now I'm trying to put a stop to it, but it's hard for one voice. But it'll help out if there's a bunch of voices. Um, so far it's working for me. Um, another thing is um, the animals on the street. We need to do something about that. That's why a lot of people are scared to walk, because they open up stuff for the community, and they're always there. So um, we need to do. Thank you. Thank you. I think one of the biggest problems I see, and this is just by going through different organizations, going to different parts of the of uh, LA32, is actually the divisions within the dis different districts of LA32. Ultimately, the problems that we're going to face as a community is not going to be something focused on University Hills, Rose Hills, or just El Sereno. It's problems that are going to affect all of us. So I think moving forward. We really need to have an effective neighborhood council that has representatives from all regions that can really bring us together and really be able to tackle, tackle these issues head on. Thank you. I would say uh, unity within the community. If we can tether the small businesses, the organizations, the schools, the families, then we can act in solidarity to address the multiple issues that face our community, and that way we can act together to change our community. Thank you. We used to call it people power back in the day. <laughs> I, I would say one of the biggest issues um, in the community right now is uh, gang violence and crime. I know a lot of people, including myself, don't necessarily feel safe walking in certain, on certain streets or certain times of the day, um, and it's definitely something we need to fix, and a lot of that starts with the, the, the children in the community, so I feel like uh, there needs to be an emphasis on after school programs or just programs in general, for example, the Summer Night Lights program in the summer uh, does a lot of that. Working with children, keeping them away from gangs, and keeping gangs away from children. Thank you. We're cleaning up the community. I do see a lot of uh, trash out there on all those streets. Yes, we do need to get our community cleaned up. We need to make it better, beautify it, make it more inviting for new blood to come into our community, to make it more safe for the streets out there. Instead of, we got the uh, Summer Night Lights, it's a great program. I work on that program out there all the time, and I get to work with the children out there with baseball, basketball, whatever sports are out there. So it's just a good, good idea to bring more stuff into the community to make it better, do it better. Thank you. Thank you. Ready? Uh, one of the circumstances of issues and challenges uh, is uh, working with the youth. Like we spoken earlier, how uh, we have some of the we have the one of the largest uh, contingencies of 19 to 34 year olds, and it's really capturing them and having programs for them. And I want to make sure that so a lot of the programs that are in other affluent neighborhoods are the same. That are, yeah, I want to raise my family here, and so I want to make sure that they have the same resources that places like you know like Beverly Hills, things like that. We bring that over here and make sure that our youth are uh, doing well in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, greatest challenge that I see is parent involvement at schools, all schools. I would address this by reaching out directly to the principal and set up a plan so we can work with the parents to reach out to them so they can be able to get involved in their school and in their community and, and getting together with one another. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one of the challenges I see is, uh, again, like some of my, some of the, uh, what I've said here is uh, youth involvement. Uh, a lot of the youth say that I want they, they want to get out of this neighborhood, but you know we, as a, as a community, have to bring them back into the neighborhood, take pride in their neighborhood. You know, keep you know spaces open. You know, Eastside Cafe. You know, places where the youth can go and uh, empower themselves. And we, as adults, you know, and teachers and educators in the community, have to empower them as well. Take pride in their community. Thank you. Apologies to everyone. It was so late. I wasn't able to make it here. <laughs> anyway, I have a passion for El Sereno. One of the problems that we, I think, would help El Sereno a lot if we could get started with the Chamber of Commerce that we had in the past. 
okay, that would create some jobs and uh, would help vitalize the two corridors that we have, the Huntington Drive and the uh, Eastern, uh, with the Chamber of Commerce that we had before. I was a member of it. I used to live on Lowell and Poplar, one of the old Spanish stucco houses out there. Thank you. Another time. Thank you. I'm sorry, I'm writing down what you're saying. So I can, we'll email you a list of the problems and the solutions because I think you're all doing a great job. So sorry, I'm not paying attention to the clock. So if you'll pay attention to the clock in case I'm not. <laughs> okay. So the question at hand is, what is our biggest challenge here in El Sereno? Um, LA90032, we have an outreach problem. If you notice, there's not a lot of people here at our meet and greet. I don't know if it was the social media that was broken down, communication was broken down. We didn't knock and knock like what we normally do, get people to come in. I would like to see our forum full of constituents and stakeholders for our next meetings. Thank you. I think for me it's also the building of the Chamber of Commerce because every community that has uh, influence in politics has a Chamber of Commerce. So El Sereno needs to get on that track. Uh, having said that, I think holding people accountable who get elected on the Neighbor Council, having worked in, in politics, you need a certain number of votes to get any kind of project approved. So. After people get elected, you need to hold them accountable and say, you, need, you promise to pass this, so let's do this. Thank you. Great, thank you. I think the biggest problem that faces all of us year after year is education. I volunteer as every Saturday at my church as a religious education teacher, campus. And I try to teach the kids that they've got to get an education. I volunteered seven and a half years as a detention instructor at the county jail. I can't come back to education. We don't have the education, we don't know the laws are affecting me. And, uh, what I try to do here all the time is educate everyone on how things have to be done. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, the biggest uh, issue that I see is again, um, I'm going to go back to separation.